Come with me. Did you know that Tupac read for the part of Bubba in Forrest Gump? Or that he's besties with Jada Pinkett Smith? We'll tell you all about it. But first, let's check out how this rap legend went from the broke streets of Oakland to LA mansions to lyrics that continue to inspire the world. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Lauren Mayhew, and we're here to check out some thug life. So get ready to hit him up, because Mike Drop is counting down 107 music facts about Tupac Shakur. Let's do this. Fact number one, Tupac was born Lashane Parrish Crooks in New York City on June 16, 1971. Fact number two, his name was later changed to Tupac Amaru Shakur. Shakur is Arabic for thankful to God. Fact number three, Tupac Amaru was a Peruvian revolutionary who led the Inca people against the Spaniards. The words Tupac Amaru means shining serpent. Fact number four, Tupac Shakur was born to parents Bailey Garland and Afeni Shakur who were active in the Black Panther movement. His mother was actually in jail while she was pregnant with him. Fact number five, Tupac was raised by his mother and had no contact with his father until he was an adult. Tupac's stepfather, Matulu Shakur, was also active in the Black Panther movement. Fact number six, his godmother Asada Shakur is one of the most prominent black revolutionaries, with some of her teachings serving as the basis for the modern day Black Lives Matter movement. After killing a New Jersey state trooper in a shootout in 1973 that left her wounded and her fellow activist dead, Asada went to prison, but escaped in 1979 and fled to Cuba. She's still on New Jersey's most wanted list, but is protected by the Cuban government. Fact number seven, Tupac stayed in New York City for much of his childhood, but moved around a lot between Harlem, Brooklyn, and the Bronx. Fact number eight, Tupac's mother helped him get interested in arts early, enrolling him in Harlem's famous 127th Street Repertory Ensemble. His first acting role was the character Travis in A Raisin in the Sun. Fact number nine, in 1986, Tupac, his mother, and his half-sister Sakiwa moved to Baltimore, Maryland. Fact number 10, Tupac enrolled in the prestigious Baltimore School of the Arts, where he quickly gained popularity and did very well both creatively and academically. Fact number 11, in high school, he took ballet classes and played the role of the Mouse King in the school's production of The Nutcracker. Fact number 12, he was classmate with Jada Pinkett Smith and the two became fast friends. They even performed together at their school's talent show, knocking out a duet of Girls of the World Ain't Nothing But Trouble by Fresh Prince, better known as Jada Pinkett's future husband, Will Smith. Fact number 13, Tupac and Jada's friendship lasted forever. Tupac even wrote and published poems dedicated to his friend entitled Jada and the Tears in Cupid's Eyes. Fact number 14, Tupac began rapping in high school, going by the name MC in New York. Fact number 15, his initial inspiration came after a friend was accidentally killed while playing with a gun. The first rap he ever wrote and performed was about gun control. Fact number 16, he went to many rap competitions with his friend and human beatbox, Dana Mouse Smith, and they won most of the time. He was considered by his peers to be the best rapper at his high school. Fact number 17. Musically, Tupac was inspired not only by other rappers, but mostly by British and Irish pop stars like Kate Bush, Sinead O'Connor, Culture Club, and U2. Fact number 18. Besides raps, he also wrote poetry and was a big fan of Les Miserables and works of Shakespeare. Tupac described plays like Romeo and Juliet as some serious ghetto sh**, comparing the story of young love to gang wars between the Bloods and the Crips. Fact number 19. He also dipped his toe into political activism while in Baltimore, joining the Young Communist League USA. Fact number 20. At age 17, his family re located to Marin County, California, just outside of San Francisco Bay Area, leading him to drop out of Baltimore School of the Arts and he never graduated high school. Fact number 21, Tupac said that this move was what sent him down the road to the gangsta lifestyle. His mother struggled with substance abuse and he eventually moved in with a neighbor and began selling drugs on the streets. Fact number 22, at the same time, he also formed a new rap crew with his friends Ray Love and DJ Dizzy. The trio called themselves Strictly Dope. Fact number 23, he also began taking classes with poet Layla Steinberg, who would become his first manager. Fact number 24, one of the shows Layla organized for Strictly Dope helped Tupac land an audition with Oakland rap crew Digital Underground. He joined the group in 1990 as a backup dancer and roadie. Fact number 25, while he was with Digital Underground, someone once confronted him with a 12-gauge shotgun over a girl at a Martin Luther King Jr. Day party. Fact number 26, he made his first appearance on a recorded track on the Digital Underground single Same Song, which was featured on the soundtrack for the 1991 film Nothing But Trouble. Fact number 27, the song also appeared on Digital Underground's album This Is An EP Release. Tupac appeared in the music video as an African king. Fact number 28. Tupac also appeared on Digital Underground's album Sons of the P, released in late 1991. Soon after, he signed a deal with Interscope Records. Fact number 29. Tupac's debut album was released soon after he signed with Interscope. It was called Tupacalypse Now, a reference to Francis Ford Coppola's epic war film Apocalypse Now. Fact number 30. Tupacalypse Now was an underground hit. It went gold and a single Brenda's Got a Baby made it to the top 30 of the R&B charts. 
Fact number 31. But the album also drew controversy because of its violent lyrics, especially after a state trooper was killed by a guy who was listening to the track Soldier's Story. Then Vice President Dan Quayle called for Tupacalypse Now's removal from stores nationwide. Fact number 32. It didn't stop another one of the album's songs, If My Homie Calls, from getting featured on MTV when Tupac performed the song live on Yo! MTV Raps. Fact number 33. His next project was the film Juice, where he starred alongside Queen Latifah, Omar Epps, and Samuel L. Jackson. Fact number 34. Tupac played Bishop, a man addicted to the thrill of violence, and the performance was critically acclaimed. Fact number 35. The next year, he continued his acting career with a role in John Singleton's Poetic Justice, where he starred opposite Janet Jackson. Fact number 36. Tupac was asked actually to take an HIV test before doing the kissing scene with Janet Jackson, but he refused. Fact number 37. The famed poet Maya Angelou had a role in the film, and when she heard Tupac cussing at an extra one day, she went and had a talk with him. Maya pointed out to Tupac that his role in this world as a public figure required him to be more aware of his actions, and that he should be grateful of how hard his ancestors fought for him to be here. He wept after talking to her, and she wiped his tears with her hands. Fact number 38. After his brief stint as an actor, he returned to the studio and put out his next album, Strictly For My N-I-G-G-A-Z. The acronym stands for Never Ignorant Getting Goals Accomplished. Fact number 39. The album made it onto the Billboard 200, debuting at number 24, and eventually went platinum. Its hit singles were I Get Around and Keep Your Head Up. Fact number 40. On I Get Around, Tupac rapped alongside his old digital underground mentor, Shock G, and he ghost wrote Shock G's verse. Fact number 41. In 1993, he landed a role in the basketball movie above the rim. He wowed critics with his performance, and Entertainment Weekly said that Tupac was the most dynamic young actor since Sean Penn. Fact number 42. He also formed a new rap group called Thug Life with his friends Big Psych, Macadocious, Rated R, and his stepbrother, Mo Preem. They released their only album, Thug Life Volume 1, in late 1993, and it went gold. Fact number 43. By this point in his career, he already had experienced a bunch of legal troubles. In 1991, Tupac was roughed up by Oakland police officer after he was stopped for jaywalking. He filed a million dollars lawsuit against the city and eventually settled out of court for 42000 Fact number 44. In 1992, he was arrested after a public altercation led to a stray gunshot hitting and killing a six-year-old boy standing nearby. The charges were later dismissed when he settled out of court. Fact number 45. In late 1993, Tupac was charged with shooting two off-duty police officers in Atlanta. Those charges were later dropped as well. Fact number 46. One month later, he and two members of his entourage were charged with the sexual assault of a female fan. Though Tupac denied the woman's claims, he was found guilty guilty and sentenced to up to four and a half years in prison. The guilty verdict came in the day after he was shot by muggers in the lobby of a New York recording studio. Fact number 47. The mugging in New York was almost deadly. Tupac and two members of his entourage were shot by unknown assailants at Quad Recording Studios. Fact number 48. Amazingly, Tupac survived his two gunshots to the groin, two to the head, and one to the hand. He was taken to Bellevue Hospital Center. They worked magic there. Fact number 49. Tupac suspected East Coast rappers Sean Puffy Combs, the notorious B.I.G. and producer Andre Harrell of being involved in the shooting because he went to the studio after being shot and he said they looked shocked to see him alive. Tupac also said in an interview that I noticed nobody would look at me. This sparked an East Coast West Coast rivalry that grew more heated over the next few years. Fact number 50. The attack felt even more personal to Tupac because at the time he and Biggie were friends. Earlier in Biggie's career, Tupac even took him under his wing, taught him about the rap game, brought him on stage, and even let Biggie crash on his couch when necessary. After the attack, Tupac turned his back on the friendship. Fact number 51. If Tupac wasn't a 100% sure before that his ex-friend Biggie Smalls was behind the attack, he was 200% convinced after Biggie released a song soon after called Who Shot Ya? Despite Biggie and Combs insisting they recorded it before the incident, Tupac still took the song very personal. Fact number 52. Tupac then unleashed an array of diss tracks towards Biggie. The most famous one was Hit Em Up, in which Tupac reminds Biggie that he was a good friend, saying, remember when I let you sleep on the couch? And then goes on to make threats and claim that he hooked up with his wife, Faith Evans. Ouch. Fact number 53. An injured Tupac began to serve his prison sentence for sexual assault at Clinton Correctional Facility in February of 1995. A month later, his next studio album dropped. It was called Me Against the World. Fact number 54. It debuted at the top of the Billboard 200 charts, making Tupac the first artist to have an album at number one while serving a prison sentence. Fact number 55. Me Against the World was also his most critically acclaimed work yet, earning tons of praise from critics, both at the time and in retrospect. Fact number 56. The album was named by the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame on their definitive 200 list, 
a collection of best examples of music albums ever released. Fact number 57. The album's lead single, Dear Mama, was an ode to his mother, describing the rough yet loving upbringing he had with her. Fact number 58. Dear Mama reached the number 9 spot on the Billboard Hot 100 and was Tupac's first song to reach the top 10 on the mainstream chart. Fact number 59. Since its release, several other famed rappers have named Dear Mama as their favorite Tupac song, including Eminem and Kendrick Lamar. Fact number 60. The song has been archived in the National Recording Registry at the Library of Congress. Tupac is just the third rap artist to achieve the honor, behind Public Enemy and Grandmaster Flash. Fact number 61. Tupac finally received Grammy recognition for his work at the 1996 ceremony, snagging nominations for Best Rap Album and Best Rap Solo Performance for Dear Mama. Unfortunately, he did not win either award. Fact number 62. Tupac only served served eight months of his prison sentence, thanks to a parole arrangement and bond payment of $1.4 million by Suge Knight, the CEO of Death Row Records at the time. Fact number 63. Tupac signed with Death Row immediately upon his release from prison as part of the deal he made with Suge for bailing him out of jail. Tupac quickly set to work on the first three albums he was contracted to record under Death Row. Fact number 64. That album, All Eyes on Me, became a hip-hop hallmark upon its release in 1996. It was the first rap album to ever be released as a double disc, and it featured tons of material that glorified the gangsta life, daring his enemies to attack him again. Fact number 65. The album debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 and went quintuple platinum in its first year of release, selling over 5 million copies. Fact number 66. All Eyes on Me eventually received a diamond certification for selling over 10 million copies. Fact number 67. The first single from the album was also a dual release and both songs reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100. How Do You Want It? and California Love. Fact number 68. How Do You Want It? featuring Casey and Jojo was an ode to sex and money. There were three different music videos made for the track including one full of nudity and pole dancing that was certified as adults only by the Motion Picture Association of America. Scandalous! Fact number 69. The two other music videos included the censored version of the Wild Sex Party and a concert version of the song that showed them performing it live. Fact number 70. The track How Do You Want It actually samples the song Body Heat by Quincy Jones. Fact number 71. His other number one hit, California Love, featuring Dr. Dre, threw out love for the Golden State with nods to LA, Watts, Compton, and other California cities. It featured the famous line, California knows how to party. Heck yeah we do! Fact number 72. California Love featured a hook recorded on a vocoder, a synthesizer that plays sounds according to an input of human voice. It was recorded by Roger Troutman of the 80s funk band Zap. Fact number 73. This track also had more than one music video. The first and most famous one, directed by Hype Williams, was inspired by the 1985 action film Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. The music video shows Dre and Tupac going to Oakland in the year 2095 and finding a post-apocalyptic world. The video also features Tony Cox and Chris Tucker as part of the futuristic tribe. Fact number 74. The second one used a remix of the song and shows Tupac waking up as if the post-apocalyptic party was all but just a dream. He calls up Dre to tell him about his dream, then goes to a current day mansion party at Dre's house. Fact number 75. Despite all of his musical success, the acting bugs seem to have bitten Tupac again. After reading a script for a film called Gridlocked after he got out of prison, he took the role and signed on to shoot it in the summer of 1996 along with two other films, Bullet and Gang Related. They were the last films Tupac acted in. Time for the lightning round, guys. So many people thought Tupac was an amazing actor, including director John Singleton, who said he could have been the next Denzel Washington. There are actually many more roles planned for him that many people never even knew about. Let's check some of them out. Fact number 76. Tupac was supposed to play a role in Singleton's drama Higher Learning, but casting fizzled at last minute. Fact number 77. Singleton also had his eye on Tupac to play Shaft in the remake of the 70s classic that he was working on. Fact number 78. In 1993, Tupac was filming Menace to Society when he assaulted director Alan Hughes after a disagreement. He was fired from the cast and replaced by Lorenz Tate. Fact number 79. Tupac wanted to play Bubba in Forrest Gump, and he even read for the part. That definitely would have been interesting to see. Fact number 80. He may have lived in sunny California, but believe it or not, Tupac was up for a role on Jamaican bobsled team in Cool Runnings. Love that movie. Fact number 81. He was also in consideration for a role in Def Jam's How to Be a Player. I think a lot of people would have taken notes from Pac. Fact number 82. Before his death, Tupac was set to star alongside his former high school pal Jada Pinkett Smith in a romantic comedy, Woo. Fact number 83. He also auditioned to play Jedi Mace Windu in Star Wars The Phantom Menace. The part ended up going to Tupac's co-star from Juice, Samuel L. Jackson. Though Sam Jackson was pretty freaking great. I think we can all agree that Tupac would have looked badass wielding a purple lightsaber. Fact number 84. Though he wasn't necessarily up for these, we'll count it as an honorable mention. Tupac fans compiled a list of the rap lovers' websites, Pigeons and Planes, of 10 roles they wish Tupac could have played. That list includes Omar in The Wire, The Joker in The Dark Knight, and Django and Django Unchained. 
pretty much any kick-ass role available. All right guys, that's it for the lightning round. Which role would you have liked to see Tupac play the most? Which films and roles did he play that were your favorite? Comment below and let us know. And now, back to those facts. Fact 85. Though he was set to film Wu in September of 1996, tragedy struck. Tupac was shot in Las Vegas shortly after leaving a boxing match with Suge Knight. As they were leaving the MGM Grand, Tupac got into a fight with an unknown man and soon after a drive-by shooting occurred as Tupac sat in the passenger seat of Suge Knight's car. He was shot four times and passed away six days later at the University of Nevada Medical Center. He was just 25 years old. Fact 86. Tupac's death sent shockwaves through the hip-hop community who felt that the East Coast West Coast beef had hit the peak of violence. Despite the outcry, East Coast rapper Notorious B.I.G. was killed six months later in L.A., also in a drive-by shooting. Fact number 87. Though no charges were filed in either murder case, later investigations suggest that both were carried out by a member of the Crips who did it for a financial reward. Allegedly, Biggie paid off Tupac's killer, who also used his gun, but he would later turn on him, though nothing has ever been proven. Mo money, mo problems. For real. Fact number 88. Tupac was cremated and his friends and co-collaborators, the Outlaws, smoked his ashes in a blunt. Fact number 89. The last songs Tupac ever recorded were released a couple months after his death on an album titled The Dawn Illuminati, The Seven Day Theory. Fact number 90. The album's title comes from his experiment to complete an entire album in one week. He spent three days writing and recording songs, then four days mixing and mastering them. Fact 91. The album was released under what was going to be Tupac's new stage name, Machiavelli, a pseudonym inspired by Italian political author Niccolo Machiavelli. Tupac had been inspired by the author's most notable work, The Prince, which he read while he was in prison. Fact number 92. Niccolo Machiavelli faked his own death, which is why some people think that Tupac is still alive somewhere. Why else would he adopt such a similar stage name? And he had once said he would take money without fame. Fact number 93. In 1997, Tupac received many posthumous award nominations for his work the previous year. He won favorite hip-hop rap artist at the American Music Awards. Fact number 94. All Eyes on Me won the Soul Train Award for Album of the Year. Fact number 95. All Eyes on Me was also nominated for Best Rap Album at the Grammys, and Tupac received two Best Rap Performance nominations for How Do You Want It and California Love. He also became the first rapper to be nominated for posthumously released work when his 2000 song Changes was nominated for Best Rap Solo Performance. Fact number 96. Tupac is one of the few artists who has had more of his work released after his death than while he was alive. Part of this is due to the fact that he was so productive in his final years. In 1995 alone, he recorded over 150 songs, sometimes recording three in a day. Fact number 97. Tupac has had nine albums released after his death, along with various verses included on collaborative projects. Fact number 98. His estate has only grown in value since his death, and according to Forbes, he is one of the highest earning non-living celebrities. Fact number 99. He is the first rapper to have a wax figure in the Madame Tussauds museums. Fact number 100. The University of California at Berkeley offered a class on Tupac shortly after his passing called History 98, Poetry and History of Tupac Shakur. Uh, can I sign up? Fact number 101. A specialty exhibit showcasing his work called All Eyes on Me, The Writing of Tupac Shakur was on display at the Grammy Museum in spring of 2015. Fact 102. A biopic about Tupac's life is in production called All Eyes on Me. It's set to star The Walking Dead's Denai Gurira, Afeni Shakur, and newcomer Demetrius Ship Jr. as Tupac himself. Fact number 103. Tupac still manages to perform, sort of, thanks to a famous hologram that made its debut at the 2012 Coachella Music and Arts Festival. The hologram Tupac performed alongside Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg to sing California Love. Fact number 104. A 2012 musical based on his work, Holla If You Hear Me, made its way to Broadway in 2014. Fact number 105. Tupac was engaged to Quincy Jones's daughter, Kadeda Jones, at the time of his death and had previously dated Madonna. Fact 106. Rashida Jones once wrote an angry letter to Tupac after he criticized her father Quincy for dating white women. Fact number 107. Tupac's favorite actor was Jim Carrey, and his favorite musician was Prince. He even sampled some of Prince's songs for his album All Eyes on Me. Great minds think alike, and this is one great mind that will continue to inspire people for decades to come. Hey guys, once again, I'm Lauren Mayhew, and you just finished watching Mike Drop's 107 music facts about Tupac Shakur. Did you guys enjoy these facts? Make sure to subscribe because we are bringing you more facts about your favorite musicians every single week. Let us know which artists we should find facts about next, and I'll see you guys next time.